What is up guys, Dan with Maverick Methods here. Today we are doing a video solely focused on differentiation. So how are you going to come up with those differentiating ideas? And what are we actually doing when we start to differentiate a product? So I want to start this off with the way that I view this differentiating process and moving from the side of not differentiating a product at all to actually coming up with brand new products. And I want to explain how I think of this with you now. So it's based on a spectrum, basically from online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, all the way across to actually innovating and coming up with brand new products for your market. So on one end of the spectrum, we have RA and OA, retail arbitrage and online arbitrage. And at this stage, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, at this stage, we are actually just selling what we already know is selling well. We aren't putting our own brand name on it and we aren't differentiating the product either. And then if we move one step over, we start talking about basic private label. And in this stage, basic private label, we are looking at the market and seeing what sells well, but we are not differentiating very much. We're only adding our own brand name to the product. We're only private labeling and then offering the same exact version as those already on the marketplace. And then if we move one step further, we get advanced private label. And at advanced private label, this is where we should all be focusing. So this is where you're actually researching what sells well. And as you will remember from some of the product research videos, we are then going to take that knowledge of what is selling well and what is happening in that market. And we're going to come up with brand new products, different products, better products. And we're going to do that by solving the problems with the products we see on the marketplace already. So we're finding what is in high demand in the marketplace. And then we're coming up with our own better versions of those products, new versions of these products. And we're solving the problems with the current products. We're adding value to our version of this product and hearing customers concerns with this type of product. And so here, much more than here, we are coming up with a new version of a product. And of course, adding our brand name to that product. And then lastly on the spectrum, we'll talk about innovations. And with innovations, these are in fact products that are not yet available on the market. And so these differ substantially from the others in that we are not able to see the specific demand for this new product that we're bringing out because it's new. We are able to see an underlying demand in that other products in this niche sell very, very well. And so we're going to come into the same niche with a brand new product and bring that to life in the market. So this kind of moves across from reselling into offering your own versions of the exact same existing products to offering new products, better versions and enhanced versions of specific products under your brand name and then into actually offering brand new products in which case you might even be not only creating a new product but even creating a new market and with all of these across the spectrum you are looking at increased risk increased work and increased reward and the reason that i share this with you is that i remember a couple of years ago uh, a group of my friends and I would often sit down and think of new ideas, think of products, think of problems in our everyday lives, and then come up with potential solutions, potential products that could add value in that area or fix that problem. But the issue that we always had was, okay, well, now we've come up with a product idea. How would we even go about doing this? Like, where do you even start? And I remember back then looking into things like industrial design and product design uh, and even courses in industrial design. 
but it still wasn't exactly what I was looking for. It lacked that freedom of coming up with your new product and introducing it to the market. And that is why I view it this way. Because the thing is that even if you stay at this stage for a very long time, you're now working towards this stage in which one day you could offer a brand new product. You could create an innovation, a new to the world product, and perhaps even create a new market. And so this is how I view this process. And this is something just to keep in mind as you do this, as you continue on your private label journey, think about the opportunities that you have uh, to one day actually introduce new products to the market. So coming off of the whiteboard there where we were discussing how we would look at the process as a spectrum from reselling all the way to innovating, if we focus more on advanced private label where we are really adapting the product and differentiating coming out with new offerings and innovating, we're going to focus on those two and look at the areas in which we can come up with new differentiation ideas. So with advanced private label, where you're really looking to differentiate, what strategies can I use to find out how to differentiate my product? The first thing, and I've touched on this quite a lot before, even in the product research videos, is that your differentiability and your differentiation research should begin in the finding stage. So when you're actually looking for high potential products, Let's say as an example, you had three really high potential products, very good costs, very good net profit, very good demand. What is going to separate the best one from the other two? Very often it's going to be your differentiability or the amount you can differentiate that product. So always ask yourself, how much could I adapt or add value or fix problems with this product? And now we'll cover some of the areas you can look into to really find your best differentiating ideas. Number one is inherent problems. So here you might find that of these say three really high potential products you found, one of them has a flaw that consumers just keep complaining about. And it's a flaw that you can fix. It's a problem with a product you can adapt and make your version of the product far better than those currently available. Two is your frequently bought together sections on the listing. So always have a look at that. It's sometimes also called customers who bought this also bought. Always scroll down to the bottom of the listing. Have a look at what people are buying with this. It will give you ideas into one, maybe being able to incorporate the functionality of that second item into your main item or look at bundling your items together. And the other reason that this is so important is because very often when consumers are buying the two items separately, each is marked up by itself. And so when you bundle the two together under one offering and only mark it up once, very often you can give this to the customer at a better cost to that customer. Three is your reviews, especially three and four star reviews because those are often going to be more honest than say your one star reviews where people might just be having a bad day, you know how it goes. So look at your three and four star, look at your credible reviews where they're saying, I love this product, but I wish it didn't have this. I love the product, I wish it came in this color. I love the product, but the side edge digs into my skin. I love the product, but this is wrong. That's your cue on what you can change about your product and how you can make your version far, far better. Number four is also packaging and inserts. So with packaging and inserts, it's really important that you make your brand stand out. Most people do not go to the effort to put in thank you cards and other inserts like that. And you can really make your brand and your product stand apart from the rest with a little touch like this. Something thanking the customer for being one of your patrons, thanking the customer for their loyalty to your brand, and then often offering them something of value on top of this. 
And this isn't something you advertise on the listing. This is something you surprise the customer with. And so packaging and inserts can be very, very effective at enhancing that customer experience and just adding a little bit more to your differentiation and making your brand more memorable. Keywords. Keyword research can really bring you onto some excellent differentiating ideas. Remember that with on Amazon keyword research, for example, with Keyword Tool Dominator or with Jod Toolbox, with those tools, those autocomplete tools, you are looking at data from Amazon. And this tells you that this is actually a keyword that a customer typed in on Amazon. This is a keyword to buy. That is what the search is. It's a search to buy. And so by looking at these keywords, you can see what customers are looking to buy. Very often there can be discrepancies between what is searched for and what is actually available. And this is where you can come in and actually offer what that consumer is really looking for. So as an example, let's say that you were looking at doing a dog leash. And in your research, you keep seeing the keyword come up, which is dog leash with collar. And if that happens, and then you look on Amazon and you see, well, competitors are offering the dog leash, competitors are offering the dog collar, but no one is actually offering those two together as one bundle. We know this is in fact a search to buy that full product. And so this could be an opportunity for you to come in and offer your own dog leash with collar and also use that exact keyword in your title, etc. More than that, sometimes you will actually see keywords that will bring up a product or a version of a product that isn't even available on Amazon yet, or is maybe even available on a different Amazon marketplace. And you can actually be the first to offer that product on that Amazon marketplace. Other marketplaces. So this is very important, especially if you're also selling in a smaller marketplace, say somewhere in Europe or even Australia. This is very relevant to those of you looking into us as well. But what you can do is look in your niche and then go to the other Amazon marketplaces and look at that niche there. So as an example, let's say you're selling in the UK and you are really looking into the pet niche and you found a product that's selling very well and now you want to make your own better version of that product and you're doing all your research something that would be very good to do at this point is go look at the u.s marketplace and the pet niche there it's going to give you ideas of what's selling super well there and sometimes you may even find that products are selling so, so well there, and they're not even available yet in the UK, for example. And this can be done between all different marketplaces one way or another, but it can give you a very, very good idea. So always look at your other marketplaces as well. What else does your supplier supply? This is key as well. When you're looking at your supplier's website, say it's the mini site on Alibaba, then have a look at what else they do supply. Perhaps they have products similar to what you're currently looking to do, but those that aren't even available on the Amazon platforms yet. So always have a look at this. This can also be great for differentiating. They might have great bundle options. And that is more touching on advanced private label. So where we are really, really coming out with our new versions of products. So the next question often is with the innovation side of things, when you're coming up with something that doesn't even exist yet, how would you come up with that? Innovating is not for everyone and only some individuals in private label actually want to even get to that point as a goal. Others are very happy to just continue with normal private label. And that's absolutely fine. But for some, they really do want to get to that innovation level. They want to take that risk uh, and hopefully gain that type of reward as well, creating a new market or a new niche in a specific market at least. The biggest thing with innovating and how it differs from, for example, advanced private label is that we cannot see how well the product is selling because the product isn't selling yet. We're coming up with it. 
So this is where the bigger risk comes in and where a lack of data is going to be felt. Sometimes this can actually be a natural progression from private label in that you've gained such a good knowledge of your market that you've now decided to come up with a new product for that same target audience. So there's two real levels to innovating. One would be marketplace innovation. So as we touched on looking at other marketplaces and perhaps bringing this product to your marketplace for the first time. So you're not creating a new to the world product, but you're bringing a new product to your marketplace for the first time. And then the second is going to be a complete innovation. So this is where you're actually creating a new to the world product. And in this case, there is a need for the item, but it doesn't exist yet. So where would you come up with these? The first is everyday life. When do you run into problems and are there solutions to that problem yet? This can be a key area of finding a way to innovate and come out with a product that solves that problem for the first time. When you do come across that problem, the nice thing with it is that you can, to some extent, estimate demand because you know if you're having that problem, others are having that problem too. And so others would like a solution to the problem as well. And then again would definitely be your keywords. Look at what's being demanded. Look at what's being searched for and what isn't available yet. And this can really set you on to perhaps developing new products from the ground up. And then lastly here at innovation level or that complete innovation level just note that there are other steps you're going to need to take definitely looking at things like patents uh, you get two types of patents really design patents and utility patents and design patents are often easily overcome by changing something small with your product utility patents are far far stronger so if you can get a utility patent on a new product you should be good to go there's not going to be much that a competitor can do to not infringe on your patent utility patents really cover what problem that product solves so any other product that's designed that solves that same problem would very often be infringing upon that utility patent if you register your patent with say gov.uk or uspto.gov etc just remember also register that patent with WIPO this is apparently much stronger in China and so that could help you with potential problems that rise up in China later molds and tooling is something you're going to have to look into as well obviously with a brand new type of product and you're going to need to actually have an injection mold or a tool created and this is actually going to shape your product and is how your product is going to for example be cut out of whatever material it's going to be made up of cnc machining companies as well as injection molding companies can help you with this a lot of suppliers offer this type of thing as well but china is full of individuals who can help you with these new types of products but definitely take on those additional steps of looking at patents do you know ndas non-disclosure agreements uh, whether they hold water or not it's worth taking those steps in order to protect yourself from people just taking the idea and replicating it and then with the molds or the tooling if someone creates the mold for you usually that is quite expensive to do the actual creation of the mold but once that is created then the actual units and the manufacturing of the bigger orders is usually very very cost effective and then just to sum this all up you know with differentiating and product inserts and all the rest I just wanted to share with you the product concept in case some of you guys don't know about this but this is how it's broken down there's five levels to the product concept the first is the core product and this is the key benefit of your product as an example a car would be for transport two is the tangible product and this is the actual product and it's therefore your core product the main key benefit plus all your packaging branding and any other physical attributes that are a part of that product 
each of these levels adds value to your total product offering. So even when you just focus on your packaging and adding your private label brand to a product, that has in itself additional perceived value. Number three is the augmented product. And this is all of the above plus any additional services you offer. So it could be a warranty you follow up with or an ebook that comes with the product. And so this involves all your competitive advantages that you create through those value adds. Four is your product image. This is the image of the product in the consumer's mind. So overall, what do they think about your product and your brand? This is one of the most important things to get right with your customer because once it's broken, once they have a negative image of your product, it's very, very difficult to change that. It is the toughest component to change within the consumer's frame of reference. And this again is going to be based on things like your price. What type of promotions do you do? How's your customer service? Do you get back to customers on time? Very, very important. Number five is product potential. So here we're talking about what the product could be in the future. And number six, together, these all build up and make your total product. So anytime you're adding things and it might seem silly what you're doing, you are really building out a total product. You're building out an experience that your customers are gonna go through. And that is why it's so important to pay attention to each of these areas. Anyway, guys, I hope you found value in this video. I just wanted to share with you how I view this process and perhaps how you could start thinking about it. I hope this just moved some things around and got you thinking about this process in a, a bit of a different way as well. Uh, and I really wanted to make a video solely focused on differentiation for individuals who look for this part specifically. In my opinion, this is one of the most, most important parts of the entire journey. So always spend a good amount of time thinking about this. How can you fix problems and add real value? I hope you guys are crushing it in 2018 and I will see you guys in the next video.